At the moment, young people are the powerhouse of the world. We are the engine room of every developed society. So, fact is, in the past, we we sort of underestimated the power of the digital world. Just the keyboard, we underestimated it. But look at it today, 2024. Everything revolving around Nigeria's democracy, everything revolving around Nigeria's development, be it industry, be it business, be it agriculture and what have you, has been enhanced and promoted with the keyboard. Think about it from this angle. A few years ago, if you want to make a transaction of a certain amount of money, you have to walk into the bank to do it. But today, all you need is your keyboard. All you need is just a code to impute whatever it is and then boom, it's gone. In the past, if you haven't, you know, woken up at uh, 6, 7 a.m. to drive to the office, no one sees you as responsible. But see, man, you but could be we, in the... we have remote jobs. Yes, we have remote jobs. Exactly. So we are moving things. We are enhancing prosperity for every nation, every community with a click. Well, it's an important day, the 12th day of August 2024, and annually it commemorates the international youth day the choice of team for 2024 has been premised on from cliques to progress youth digital pathways for sustainable development now joining us on the show to further expand thoughts is uh barrister titi lokbe anifooshe salami good morning to you good morning well good morning uh barrister titi lokbe it's nice to have you here in the studio it's good to be here happy international youth day happy international youth day very quickly now let's uh, set the ball rolling you are an advocate of uh, politics with values and sdgs very well and this is uh, mostly surrounding you know walks around uh, youth and youth development very quickly now let me get your take firstly on uh, what the international youth day means for many youths around the world and uh, you would also uh, give us an insight into the workings uh, that you do okay so every day is supposed to be meant to celebrate young people youth however this august is special for us because it's uh, a, rec a recognition of the strive and innovative excellence of young people across the world so it's not just about us raising the flag on this special day it's a recognition of all that we've been doing it's also an opportunity for us to evaluate how far we've come with the advocacy for our promotion and for uh, um, the push for prosperity for the world well uh, in in moving on now uh, the theme for this year is uh you know fo focused on from youth uh digital ways to you know enhancing youth development and all of that uh, how does this relate to the nigerian youth especially now that we are seeing a a huge heightened uh, influ in influx of um, youth in the technology and uh, you know tech industry where they are known as tech bros and taxis and, and all of that uh, how, how does this relate Okay, so here's the thing. At the moment, young people are the powerhouse of the world. We are the engine room of every developed society. So, fact is, in the past, we, we sort of underestimated the power of the digital world. Just the keyboard, we underestimated it. But look at it. Today, 2024, everything revolving around Nigeria's democracy, everything revolving around Nigeria's development, be it industry, be it business, be it agriculture and what have you, has been enhanced and promoted with the keyboard. Think about it from this angle. A few years ago, if you want to make a transaction of a certain amount of money, you have to walk into the bank to do it. But today, all you need is your keyboard. All you need is just a code to impute whatever it is and then boom, it's gone. In the past, if you haven't, you know, woken up at uh, 6, 7 a.m. to drive to the office, no one sees you as responsible. But see, man, you but could be we, in the... we have remote jobs. Yes, we have remote jobs. Exactly. So we are moving things. We are enhancing prosperity for every nation, every community with a click. You mentioned something pertaining to the inclusivity of technology and the provision for remote jobs where you are encouraged to work from home. Yeah. Uh, many people feel as though this has affected the Gen Z's approach to the ethics of work culture, more on the reliability of knowing that at this particular time, this person can be said to be accounted for 
in keeping with their career paths or chosen fields of endeavor. Do you think that this has somewhat dissuaded the balance in terms of shaping people the youths perceive to be more accountable or responsive to chosen fields of work? I think it's even easier. Accountability is easier with digitalization because uh, you have an assignment, you have a set target, it's input or output, garbage in, garbage out, unlike you just going to the office and then sitting all day, even though you do not do anything, your presence counts for something. So yes, uh, with regards to our body language or our culture, when it comes to work, I think the world is evolving so much. And so you do not need to be physically present in a place for you to show effectiveness. So I personally believe that digitalization even makes accountability easier. easier. Now, now, the stigma part is what you're yet to speak on. We've seen law enforcement also stigmatize against persons who are tech-savvy or into certain gadgets they have somewhat attached to people who are particularly involved in internet fraud. Uh, how do we better shape this narrative in society? Well, whilst I recognize uh, the fact that Section 4 of the Police Act empowers Nigerian police officers or security agencies to uh, if they have reasonable suspicion of a person, I recognize and reckon with that. But I also think that, uh, yes, there are excesses. And now we now have to dwell a little into the welfare of our officers. Think about it. I haven't had breakfast all day. I'm not justifying it, but I haven't had breakfast all day. And then I see somebody looking fresher than me, driving past me. Even if, even if, even if I, I am this or that, there is a possibility that one might be a little aggressive. But of course, I, I think that we need to work more on um, enhancing or pushing out the advocacy that, hey, the fact that I look a certain way does not mean that I'm into illegality. I mean, anyone who's traveled outside Nigeria would know that it's not about how you look. Someone with a tattoo might actually be the CEO of a, a huge company. It doesn't necessarily be about it, but that also goes back to our culture. You know, we are Africans, and then somehow, some way, we still impute this certain Profiling. expectation, yes, and all that. But I think we're getting there. I think we need to, as young people, also uh, advocate for uh, a sort of synergy between us and the law enforcement agencies, just like we had with NSAS. I think we're getting there. Now, one more question before my colleague would ask you a number of questions on his mind this morning. It's in shaping these narratives. Whilst these issues of profiling on the part of law enforcement might be largely an issue that the male folks deal with, on the part of the women folks, who in the demographies also account for a huge number of our female youths in the country, there are roles that they should play in keeping with sustainable goals. Culture has also impeded in some way. What would you say, in your opinion, is one way to enhance the role of women in keeping with sustainable development goals? I think uh, first and first, we need to be innovative. Uh, today, you would see hundreds and thousands of young females with a tag CEO of a small online shop and what have you. It's beautiful, e-commerce, beautiful. However, I think that whilst um, uh, this, this particular status quo, we have arrived at heat by virtue of necessity. Young females have realized that if they do no, if they rely solely on probably their certification they may go hungry however i think what we need to do as a people as a community as a government is now to see how we can expand the scope of their engagement to be more innovative yes we have the technology yes you can order online and get things done however how about we look at it from the angle of bringing innovation for example flutter wave is the strife of the is, is the strife of Nigeria strife of Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that it is the biggest innovation of of the 21st century for young people? Certainly not. Maybe not. However, we are we've been we, we've been we've been carrying that brand in that line. I'm not saying it's not beautiful, but I think that one of the things we need to do for young females for young people is now to see and identify the. Um, the uniqueness of us as a people, as Nigerians, the diversity, our different unique needs across our different topography or geography to now be able to bring forth things that would enhance our development as a people. For example, also food. 
a lot of young females go to culinary schools to learn this or to learn that, but we still eat the same sort of food, fried rice, jollof rice, coconut rice, Chinese rice, what have you. However, in Europe, even from that rice, one could be able to get... To make a number of a no dishes. A number of dishes. Yeah. So, are we innovative? Maybe not. Are we pushing ourselves to be able to discover much more things? Maybe not. I know we can do better, but we need to kickstart that conversation. Just like in the past, people weren't really looking towards um, technology, AI, the way they're looking at it now. Yes. Well, well I, I was actually going to come to that. You, you have made calls for innovation. You have made calls for creativity, for people to be dynamic in the way they think in order to be different. You can pick up one dish and make you know numerous <laughs> dishes from it and and coming to the issue of ai we have uh, in recent years seen how ai has advanced you know in major parts of the world even in, here in nigeria and this has been met by different reactions some people have you know praised the the uh, advent of ai and have said that it has made life easier for for them while others especially creatives you know, have fought really hard to to say that AI is taking their jobs away. <laughs> are, are we seeing a situation where eventually, you know, without innovation, people will start losing their jobs drastically to the advent of AI? Uh, no, I do not think so. AI enhances, promotes, and even makes our job easier. Yes, creative think that, some creative think that uh, AI is probably taking um, their roles. However, if you see an artwork, one that is done with the brush, yes. is very different from one that is modified by AI. I think that um, just like it's been done across the world, yes. indeed, there are places where AI will take the role of humans. However, what we need to start doing is to now start looking at promotive ways of leaving that primitive thinking to now enhancing the work. For example, um, uh, chat GBT. If you impute, say, what is a pen on chat GBT, chat GBT would certainly give you a response that is not organic. However, it is for you to now control, refine the way the response will come that will now be acceptable or fit into whatever function you want it to. So, AI cannot even work excellently well, without the input of humans. As we look to wrap up this session, because we have another batch of youth advocates coming in to celebrate the day, can we take your message in keeping with some of these shortfalls? The 2024 SDG report says only 17 of the goals are on track. Hmm. Uh, what's your encouragement to Nigerian youth in playing their part in getting these goals back on track? Well, my message to Nigeria is a simple. Uh, things might seem discouraging, things might not be encouraging for you as a young person living in Nigeria, but let's keep knocking, let's keep eating, uh, things will get better. Uh, the SDG goals are supposed to be ones that enhance our own existence for the generations coming, and it hasn't been so easy fulfilling each and every one of it in Nigeria. But definitely we won't give up we'll keep striving to make the world a better place